Hi everybody, Tommy here from Queers and Soaps. I just wanted to introduce you to some friends of mine who are about to embark on some fun soap opera discussion. So tune in and enjoy, and I will see you soon. Hi, and welcome to Queers and Soaps. Um, I'm Eric, and this is Bevan. Hi. We are, we are bringing more Dallas to you this week, episodes six to 10 in season two. So Tommy will roll the credits and we'll begin. All right. So the first episode of season two, or not the first episode, the episode six of season two is uh, called Double Wedding. This was very deceiving because when I was thinking back, as I watched it like years ago, just like you, and I'm like, double wedding. I'm thinking like two people are going to get married, right? That's what like, I'm yeah. thinking. Like and I'm like, I'm like, who get married this early? I don't remember. Like, I totally blank. <laughs> so, well, I didn't know it all. I didn't know it all. I was like, oh, that's quick. I didn't even realize people were engaged. Yeah, right. You didn't remember either. <laughs> yeah, no. and then no. So funny. So in the beginning uh, of the episode, we have Pam giving Bobby a massage. There's a man outside Digger's house. We don't know who this man is. Um, uh, Maggie, Aunt Maggie is uh, leaving Digger's house. And he's like, I'm looking for Pam. She's like, well, she ain't here. Um, so then we have breakfast outside at the Ewings. So I put breakfast outside. Do you remember what I told you? Like they, when... Dallas was recorded. They recorded in Dallas. They could only record outside. They couldn't record anything inside. So oh, that's yeah. You remember saying that. Yeah. So now, did you notice in these episodes, like all these breakfasts outside and all the scenes that they have outside? I didn't realize it until I'm watching now and I'm like, oh shit, they filmed a lot outside. <laughs> I'm actually not even kind of realizing it now until like you're saying, like I'm realizing it now as you're saying it because I was like, oh right. wow, that's. And so many scenes outside in these like so many scenes. scenes. Yeah, <laughs> right. They film a lot out there because like they film a lot of the cars pulling in and like everybody's outside all the time and that's a pool and yeah, kind of yeah. funny. But that's yeah, why. Yeah. So they could only they could all. But now I wonder because they had a scene with Jock coming outside the like coming out of the door. I wonder if they yeah. like let him in the doorway to come out because from what I was told, they weren't even allowed in the house. So I'm like. But they had, I feel like they had to let them in because when JR stands on that, um, the balcony part in a future episode, like he looks at, down at the pool when he finds the body floating. Yeah. Um, I would say, later. Well, <laughs> yeah. but I would say that it was probably just more along the lines of like he couldn't film inside. So like he could film them coming out and all that sort of stuff. Okay. It'd probably just be something like that, I'd say. And, probably just yeah. more specific do not have the crew inside my goddamn house. Right, right. <laughs> which makes sense, you know. You don't yeah. want like strangers invading and all that stuff. And yeah, and and if crew was in there, I mean, not that they would, but there could be a klepto among the crew and cast. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true enough. It was the seventies, no. <laughs> <laughs> right? And <laughs> and I mean, it was becoming a hit show. It wasn't quite a hit yet. So desperate times. No. <laughs> um. So. Lucy wants to oh like she she cracked Lucy cracked the joke that she wanted to visit the Wayward Boys School when uh, they were talking about like oh uh, yeah so the, that development deal so the development deal with the church group that Bobby's yeah. like current construction construction vibe is channeling yeah so he's definitely sticking with the construction stuff through these episodes um, yeah. Jock gets on Bobby about what he wants to do. He's like, first you're in the business, then you're mm. gonna be the ranch hand. Now you're going to be a construction. Um, Bobby's just trying to find his way, like, and yeah. the family is very overbearing. Like they're like they're like have kids and do this. Like I mean, it's very annoying. I'm like, dude, if like I have family. I mean some families are still like that man i mean like some of I the know. standards have changed a little bit but it is wild like so like you know they sit there and um you know you've got to be married and stuff like that yada 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 or if you are married you know you got to start looking at 
finding something to settle down, yada, yada, yada. But like mm. all those sort of, all those sort of like socially acceptable things are sort of still there. It just kind of doesn't matter if you, you know, if you're married up or not, it's more like whether or not you are actually, yeah. Right. They just did a, a storyline on General Hospital. Um, I think it's Maurice Bernard's son was involved in it. And it was basically like his parents wanted him to be one thing, but he likes playing the guitar and doing music. And of it's course. not a story. It's always and that. <laughs> but it's funny. Yeah, yeah. Like he's the artist of the family, whatever. And like they yeah. aren't having it. But it's funny that in 2023 to 24, they're still doing those stories, you know, like because it's probably still happening. Well, it does. It does. You've still got people yeah. who like have set plans for that i mean you know you don't have to it's not even just in like sort of affluent or like sort of super wealthy families i mean your middle class families will sort of bring that pressure as well you know there's like in the old days you know they had those trades that used to be passed down between the generations and now it's more like oh it's a the family business like i mean obviously there's all other businesses but they were always like a trade business or at least popularly shown that way and now it's sort of like you know whatever your family would make some money in there's still that sort of expectation yeah. there for a lot of people. It's just there. Parents have plans for their kids and their kids don't care or not care, yeah, but yeah. You know, have their own life. So our next scene, we're at the bar and um, Digger's drinking away as always. Um, then there's the Edison. dude from... No, Edison is following him. His name's Edison, this man in the car, and he's following Digger at this point and he sees Digger come up to his little mate in the in the alleyway or outside the bar and he's like oh i gotta pay or whatever like come in we'll have a drink right yeah yeah all the class so, yeah so he comes in and um basically just feeding them drinks we still don't really know what he wants yet like he's just like around we know he wants something because he's just feeding the diggers shit yeah um, i wanted to just throw out his name as a point of reference because like i'll end up like referring back to him it's just easier if i <laughs> well edison is, edison is the drunk guy right no edison is the the, the dude that's um following digger so she oh. calls him Ed, but it's uh what is it edison jesus what does that say edison faraday haynes Okay, yeah, so I, I, cause I was named Ed through it, because I'm like, I don't remember it being Edison, so I must have missed that part where he said his full name or heard his full name. Because I'm it was, like, it, wait, that's, I don't was, remember it that. It was around name. the start, I'm pretty sure, but as soon as I heard Edison, I that just stuck in my head. Even when, um, you know, Pam says later, oh, Ed, you know, I was like, Ed, oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, so we find out this man's name eventually. And um, yeah. so then, the next scene we're in, um, Bobby meets with the Reverend for the construction project. Mm -hmm. um, Digger's raving, dig, back to the bar, Digger's raving about how he smelled oil. Um, he feels Just the strange man. I put, I put feels the strange man, because I guess we didn't know his name at, the, at this point yet. Oh, no, um, no. And he, pay, he like plies them with liquor. Yeah. So he's continuing to feed him liquor. So we know he's up to no good, this man. And he asked him about Pam. Um, yeah. And that's, and that's where when, he, yeah, he starts. Yeah. I actually kind of like this scene in a way because, like, um, for the life of me, I can't remember Digger's actor's name at the moment. But he has such a great ability to be able, like, and through the sort of drunkenness and the because Digger's always like, you know, like proper old, been drinking most of his life, sort of drunk. And um, he's able right. to sort of get across that anger because he's sitting there talking about Pam and like it's all sarcasm. He's like, "Oh, the the uh, social scene of the of the higher ups, like the Ewings, takes a lot of time from Pamela." <laughs> and then he starts talking very pridefully that she works hard though at her job, and that you know only yeah. the best for my Pamela, except for the Ewings, and just throws that in there at the end. And mm. I just I don't know. I love I love that guy. He's so good. He's very torn. I know. And and I did look. So this is his last episode, and I did make note of that. His name is oh, David Wayne's. Oh, yeah, this I is David Wayne's last episode. One. This is David Wayne's last episode as Digger. Um, he he left, I believe. Well, I'm not sure if he left to do the show, but he was on a show called House Calls, 
And uh, that lasted for three seasons. So I'm guessing he left to do that. Maybe he had other things. But his friend is the guy that took over for him, Keenan Wynn, who's the next actor to play Digger, who does does look good. When I originally watched these, I didn't even remember them changing Diggers. Like, I thought (laughs) it was the same guy. I was going to say, I did sort of notice the change. Like, it's just sort of, I mean... One's got the sort of old, sort of sandy, dirty blonde. The other one's very white and bearded and stuff like that. But I thought that they actually just did the role very well. It was just two guys, um, pre- like yeah. they got all the same key points. It's just kind of slightly interpreted differently. It was great otherwise. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so apparently, and he died of lung cancer, but he didn't die until 1995, so he lasted a good amount of time. Oh, nice. Yep. <laughs> so the next note I have is Bobby's in short shorts at the pool, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> um, and then he tells Pam, like, he fills her in on, like, how they liked his ideas. Yeah. Um. Now we have, next scene, we're back to Digger. So this is, like, a really good Digger episode. Um, mm-hmm. He's in it a lot. He uh, invites the guy in. Um, then the guy ends up finding Pam at the store. Uh, the man's like, don't you remember me? I'm your husband. She's like, and Ed Haynes? Um, I love she's that. Like, we, I, I she's just like, love we aren't married. Bit. Yeah, I love that whole bit. Just the way they built up with it. If she didn't say Ed just before that commercial break, it just would have, it just comes off so f- stupid like he's just like don't you remember me and she's like no and he's like well you should i'm your husband (laughs) now i don't know how old they were but i'm thinking they're in their late 20s her and bobby oh uh when bobby and pam yeah yeah i'd say so so i really don't i can't wrap my head around a man looking that different like is that when they were like 18 they had gotten married and i'm like how do you recognize them? I well, don't know. You and you were married. Well, they were only married. It was like a fling. So yeah, we find out that she had gone on vacation. She meets that guy yeah. on vacation, and they had like a fling. And then they're like, "Let's get married." And she was just like, kind of in love with the idea of the adventure and the excitement. And of the it. rebellious. So she did it to. She also like she even talks about like she was just you know it was like we were young and you know going crazy sort of thing like it was just a rebellious thing too. Digger came and grabbed her yeah. like immediately. Yeah, and it was only legal obviously because it was out of country. I and um, what well, it yeah because uh, at their age presumably it would have been like sixteen, seventeen. They weren't old enough to get married in the US, and we're in Juarez, Mexico. Um, yeah where it was apparently still legal despite yeah i believe that like wasn't he like he had to go he was like in a war or something he was in vietnam a vietnam and he claimed to never get the annulment papers yeah because he was a prisoner of war so the my one of my favorite pam cliff scenes is coming up with uh so pam goes to cliff for help and i like how he's he's so like he like teases her a bit. Like, uh, why should uh, I help um, you? Like, stay married to really, you? <laughs> yeah. Just really quick before we get into that, because I also do actually really like that scene. Um, Ed's kind of shown as, even though he's like, oh, you know, I'm your husband, and the way he talks to Pam, the story's like quite sort of like relatively rational. I mean, soapy logic rational, like, you know, um, with Digger. He actively can see, I mean, anybody who looks at Digger can see he's a drunk ass. Like, he is a proper yeah. drunk. He is actively engaging with the old man to try and sort of get it, keep around him. Like, so even when he takes Digger home, he goes, oh, you know, I'm going to head off and go t- uh, have like a nightcap or whatever. And Digger's like, nah, bring it in here. And he's like, oh, no, I've got to go sort of thing. And he's like, nah, nah, nah. He's like, it, it's, 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 you know, it, it's rude to drink alone or whatever it was and brings him in. There's always right. like a, you know, he's very um, manipulative. Yeah, for sure. And comes off that way, even like just taking advantage of an addict, like in the way that he is. But yeah, yeah. no, I just wanted to bring that up in terms of like how he's been sort of portrayed as the episode goes because of the uh, story that he gives as well. Right, right. So we have. So Cliff and Pam, they go to, or 
Cliff says that it, the records should be on file, file at the records department. Um, yeah. They go to Aunt Maggie's. They um, see if she has it. She doesn't have it, but she says that Digger has it. Yeah. Um, then in the meantime, we have Ed going to Jr. Who he just says Mr. Ewing, and you know he's looking for Bobby. But of I course, also love JR. this scene. I love this scene where he's just like, well, you know. And then he sort of like strolls into the office and like announces himself. And JR's just like, okay, who's this guy? And then he's like, oh, you've got, you're married to my wife. And he's like, Sue Ellen. <laughs> like, <I> just, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Hagman, Hagman always has just that great, incredible, that, oh God, I can't even say the word. But yeah, no, he's just very surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny. Um, so of course you're like great jr knows there's a situation yeah. you know what he's gonna do <laughs> yeah, definitely um, so and so yeah pam's kind of way trying to get the um papers to uh, like even if it hadn't been annulled she needs the papers to sort of say that she's definitely filed for it because yeah. she hasn't told bobby and wants to actually be able to hand in the papers that's actually something that cliff laughs at her about because he's just like just, right. Yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. She's like, this is kind of where her communication issues start. Like when she start, <laughs> when she stops communicating. I don't know. Yeah, I feel bad so, for her because she's in a tough spot. She knows exactly what's going to happen if she doesn't have the proof. She knows that Jr's going to like. It's all. Come on, it'd be in the back of your mind. You're not sitting there. Yeah. With it's not being aware but, of that that fucking snake in your hands. At the same time, she should have had her trust in Bobby and should have just been like, this is what's going on and told yeah. the story before she even had to look for the papers. And then he yep. would have helped because he does later, you know, like. Yeah. So, yeah. So we have Jr. coming home and he said, hey, I going to tell the good news to Bam about everybody. Um, and then, of course, he points out that the guy is a vet, so we must trust him. <laughs> uh, Jr. just drowns out everything mm -hmm. like pities he is in that little speech he's just like oh he's a veteran he's sacrificed himself for this country he would fly yeah, yeah. when i like, tried to give him money he flat out refused you know and like it's like oh my god laying it on a bit thick yeah you need to put some butter but, on that spread. like so bobby's upset meets with cliff um bobby confronts ed asks him how much he wants of course yeah. ed antagonizes them like hit me um that'll be good for the papers whatever yeah um, yeah ed, ed kind of i don't know how he sways them because i don't think he has money but i guess he like sways a guy at the records department to help him so he keeps uh so he hides it so i think it's just more that the amount would have been enough for money for them at the time to, to be him. yeah to pay him i think what did he he said something along the lines of like all the I think they were just going for essentially like a proper divorce rather than an annulment, weren't they? Just because of the payout would be larger. Right. I think that's what it was because it was a little bit like all they sort of revealed there. So after they go to the Hall of Records, you see the blonde, that blonde suited fellow, and he gives them a bit of attitude and blah, blah, blah about the fact that there's no record of the papers. So we're like, what? And so they're solely relying on diggers. So a few scenes later, Ed. Edison comes along and you see records man and Ed scheming and blah, blah, blah. And they're looking yeah. at like a, I don't know, hundred grand or something. So I'm presuming that it's largely due to the, the divorce, like a legit divorce would be more profitable because an annulment, isn't that just like, it doesn't happen. Like it's technically not happened. Right. Or something. I don't know how they classify it's, that. It's the, it's the, um, by the church. So if that's is it solely the church annulled, still there? Like I thought like you could still get annulled these days. Yeah, you can. It's a church thing, I believe. It's just the church. I always thought it was towards towards like whether Yeah, yeah. I mean I know yeah, that the like, like, church has their version of it. I just thought that yeah, right. anyway. It's like the the church won't bless her next marriage, basically. So Bobby and so it's just it's just like more I guess they believed it more of that back then. Um yeah. So Digger confronts Ed. He's sober this time. He sobers up. Um, he remembers drinking with him, and he's like, "Oh shit!" You know, he really like you could tell on his face. Like, so he starts feeling guilty. He goes to Bobby, tells him what happened. Um, I like that. Um, Bobby told Digger to hang in Jr's office. He'll be gone all day. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I wish they would have done something with that. Like, Digger could have found something, but whatever. They didn't. Um, yeah, Pam they used meets up with Ed. At the end. Pam meets up with Ed, and uh, they kind of play his game. She's like, they kicked me out with no money, and how about you meet me here later? And of course, knowing that he'll probably just leave. And he did. It worked. <laughs> um, Tiff and Bobby threaten the dude at the records department. He gives them a copy. Um, and then they have that the reverend called and gave Bobby the contract. Yeah. The end. Yeah. So our next episode is episode seven called Runaway. Who do you think uh, is running away? This one uh, was obvious. Let me guess. Yeah, this one, I don't think I had too many notes on because, I mean, it was pretty much the same shit. Actually, I have a lot of notes because I probably would have forgotten if I didn't. <laughs> Uh, um, like I, I am not uh, the biggest fan of this particular episode, but I do remember it, if only because it's the one that half the time makes an appearance. Not half the time, actually. I remember watching an episode of Supernatural, and there's, like, dead bodies around from, like, the Seven Deadly Sins running around in Season 4. And right. they're watching Dallas, and Lucy's losing her shit on the screen in the Runaway episode, just for trivia out there for anybody watching. And it's, oh, like, that's so funny. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, no, I guess it's it was a flashback Lucy. to the 70s. I have no, 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 no. Um, it was just, um, it's at the start of season four when like hell's opened and the sins are out running around killing everybody. Sloth has like left this family to die in their lounge room, and they're all, uh, and, um, what was it? And Lucy, it's that scene where she's yelling at Pam in the bedroom. It's a good scene. It's a good scene, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it starts out with Sue Ellen and Miss Ellie planning Lucy's birthday. Um, she has a letter that um, Jock puts down or whatever. She gets it a little bit later. Yeah. Um, we have guest star Greg Evigan as the guy in the truck. He was in Pacific Palisades, which we covered recently on Queers and Soaps. Um, he's uh, also in General I, Hospital. He's also on yeah, General that's... Hospital recently, and he was in Melrose Place. Yeah, that I was guess... a big soapy in here. I didn't even realize that was him, honestly. I didn't even realize. I'm sure it said it on the credits right in front of me too. Well, and this is this oh, is God. kind of like the continuation of hot men. Like, why are there there's like hot psycho men all the time in these soaps? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, they're made for TV, uh, so, baby. They're made for TV. Yeah, so Pam's trying to get Lucy to try on the dresses that she picked out. Lucy throws them all over the place. She's all pissed off. Um, If you have well, any of the speech... There that, go for it. Oh, I was just going to say, should establish there that at this point, just before the close bit, like, it's Lucy's birthday. She um wants her own side. It's sort of music, but Sue Ellen's got that sort of sorted, you know... Um. She wants to invite her own people and then like, you know, but um, Ellie's doing the list and then you've got like JR who's planning on kind of using it to network for business. And then, you yeah, know, she, even the fan. Yeah. She Pam's overheard JR. Him. She overheard JR saying that he was going to do some business there with Jock. Yeah. Too, yeah, so yeah. Everybody's in, involved. Poor Pam too. She's actually just being really sweet. And she's like, oh, you know, I brought some dresses. Oh, did you pick them out? I'm like, well, you know. And then she completely reads that so well. And she's just like, hey, it's fine. Like, if you don't like them, it's fine. Let's go back and get some more. Yeah. Right, right. Pam tries so hard to handle Lucy. And Lucy just some in some, just some episodes ain't having none of it. Ain't no one making her feel better. <laughs> like, right. And, and again, everybody is um, outside. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, they are. <laughs> they're having breakfast outside. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, they're talking. To, this is they start mentioning um stuff for the next episode. Um, Jr. wants to back Slate, who's against Cliff Barnes, in the next mm. you know episode. Um, so they talk about that. Lucy reads a note. It's from Valine. She goes to Ray for help. I don't think Ray helps her. So Lucy, um. Mm. She steals Ewing three, you know, me and this car obsession. <laughs> they do. Which I thought I didn't now I'm confused at who's Ewing three because it's JR's car, right? Or is it Sue Ellen? It's JR's. Hey, JR says multiple times that it's his car. 
but it so was you and three. I didn't even notice that son. Sorry, I didn't take I didn't pick up on it. But so it was Ewing three that Lucy steals. So well, wait, then Ewing two. So wait, no, wait. But even if it was um Sue Ellen's car, like the one that she uses, wouldn't it technically be in JR's name? I guess. But also that's like me splitting hair, like, you know, overthinking it because they it, you do just hear that episode and JR's like, that's my car. She's and it had his yeah. credit card in it too. So So I'm gonna get the through the rest so of the right. episode. It doesn't really. make sense. It doesn't make sense because that gonna, was right. yeah. I'm going to get through this episode really quick because it's basically just Lucy and this man. Um, she goes to try to find her mother. He's not yep. there. She runs into this man um, and take like hitches a ride with him. And he's like robbing places all up and down the highway. Just like <laughs> whatever. As he's like, oh, yeah, well, I'll take you wherever you need to go. Yeah. Um, so they do all of this stuff. Um, she leaves her um, JR's car. Or, or yeah. Ewing three, whoever yes, started, yes. is left yeah. at the actually. diner. Is left at the <laughs> diner that Valine was at. Um, yeah, she's pretending that she stole the car, or whatever, just to. I guess she doesn't want him to know she's a Ewing. Um, yeah, because I'd say know, that that's what it was because she knows as soon as she sees those cops in, in the diner at first, she skedaddles through the back. Right. Um. So we find out Valine quit and all that. So then he um. Oh, um, the dude robs that place, grabs her, Lucy, and runs. Yeah. Um, Bobby ends up going to the diner. Eventually, he um he pays the guy off. Like, hey, you know, Lucy would never do that. Yeah. Um, Lucy attempts to escape. She says, "Do we want to split up?" He's like, "No, I'll take you to Austin." He robs another place. Um, back at the ranch, they're still having this party. <laughs> still the bar. I don't know if they were hoping that she'd be home by then. I'm like, bitch ran away. Like, I don't understand why you're having this party. I feel like, like, like it's like we've already got all the money involved in this. So until we know she's not showing up, we're still planning like she's showing up. They're it's like the and they should have canceled one. the party. They knew she was unhappy with the party. Like they should have just did. canceled the party. I it makes zero sense why they would have this party. But they did. Um I have JR as in his safari outfit that we will see <laughs> in many other episodes. Um, Looking outfit. <laughs> Sue Ellen talks to the councilman. She's she's really curious about Cliff. Now, this is the stuff I don't uh, like. I, I it's so weird with Sue Ellen with Cliff. Like she's like she like I feel like she's crushing on Cliff. Like she like and rooting on him. I guess because he can get JR because, you know, like she's it's the connection the to JR. So like she meets him. She's probably always thought he was nice looking. She meets him. He's sort of they uh they sort of have a good back and forth. So it's not just the flirting, but the way their comments roll off each other. You know? Yeah. Very, you know, and it also helps that the two actors are amazing. So it brings more fire to the actual words themselves. But right. um Sue Ellen's doing Sue Ellen's kind of, I don't know, she reminds, like, if she wasn't married, she feels like she is trying to kind of, like, step out and put herself out there again. And she's kind of met this guy that she finds really interesting and all that. But he's also JR's hated enemy, which, you know, and like she says, yeah. I just don't want to get what he wants, <laughs> like, all the time. I like how she says, um, she mentions at the party, she's like, oh, she Lucy just wants to make a dramatic entrance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, she's not coming to the party. <laughs> yeah, no, so she's not. we get to this bar. They're doing a contest. Um, Willie wants Lucy to sing for a hundred bucks. Um, and he also robs the place as she's as singing. She um, the cops find Willie's van. She sings, and I said, I made a, it's like a voiceover, because you know that ain't her voice. It doesn't sound like her at all. Um, the cops come out. They surround them. Bobby talks to them, says he will give them 2000 bucks. Lucy distracts them. Bobby lunges. Um, and that's about it for that scene. And that yeah, episode. Yeah, sort of happy, happy, and yeah. 
I guess, too, um, the only things to really mention, at least for me, was, like, uh, the sort of sub... They wouldn't even really call them subplots, but the sort of building background plots are probably the most important part. Otherwise, it kind of feels like right. a bit of a full episode. So you just get, like, um, them mentioning that Cliff's running for office. It was this... Uh, and like he's you know who they would back Slaves, before yeah. yeah it was like the um double right. wedding episode like when pam comes to see cliff he's setting up his offices for his senatorial run mm -hmm. you know like it's just that little tiny progression um i think what was it the candidate that they're talking about in runaway i mean the ewings as far as backing i don't think is even the one that they're backing in election so like um <laughs> it's stuff like that and it also just gives you a little bit of um sort of backstory or not backstory but like what's been happening with valine and and like just keeping those people in the audience's mind as for reasons we'll see later obviously but yeah yeah so at least you know valine did get a note to lucy so she's aware you know like that her mom's still out there and wants to see her and whatever and it's it also that she didn't accept the check from jr like i think that was like thing oh because they ended that pretty openly lucy slaps jr and walks out well lucy knows and then also when she can right. said basically hey mom wrote this note to me blah 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 they just bob it off as a story and that like jr hasn't you know like she could yeah, yeah. Yeah, it kind of annoys me how they uh, just fob Lucy off when she's like, I've got a letter that literally says that he was lying about the money. <laughs> she doesn't have the money. Like, if she right. did, why is she working in a diner? But whatever. But you can't speak ill of your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Well, oh, that one you can. I don't care what era it is. I know, I know, right? <laughs> so we get to episode eight. It's election, so we know what this one's about. Um, yes. This marks I've the first enjoyed appearance. This, episode. this makes the this marks the first appearance for Jordan Lee, who's oh, throughout man. the entire Dallas series. He goes until the last season. I love old Jordan um, Lee. Same actor yeah, too. too. Okay. In same in an actor, early world. Um, yeah, in I'm an so early good. world of Dallas recasts, same actor. Yeah, right. That's why I say the continuity is good with a lot of people, like with a lot of yeah. actors and stuff. Um. It's the same so, with Mary Lee Stone when she comes into it more. She pops in, I think, more in third season as one of the wives. And then as she grows, like, yeah, I've always liked Mary Lee. But anyway, we'll get to her. Oh, I do too, <laughs> but she's not here yet. <laughs> <No>. So <laughs> we don't talk about her. No, I'm <laughs> so we have JR, Bobby, and Jock. They're talking about a coal, getting coal on their side for the campaign. So I guess that did change. Or is it coal slave? I'm not sure. No, it's Martin Cole. <laughs> Martin Cole. Yeah. Um, we have Cliff wanting to stop wasteful oil drillings, which is, you know, JR and Jock's business. So that's why they're against him. And I like, I put, made a note that Cliff seems to respect Jock because he's like, Jock, Jock's a barracuda. Like he kind of like is like, at least I know up front what I'm getting with Jock. Oh, so this um, is when that guy, yeah. So that guy, uh, Livingston, I think they said his name was, or something later. Yeah. I think I'll check. I'll check in a minute. He's sort of like, uh, so while the Ewings are sort of sitting there going, "Oh, who do we back and who do we do this?" You've got they sort of have Cliff at the same time on the same morning in his offices, being schmoozed by some sort of sleazy representative who's right. like, you know, "Oh, we love your your you know your." your work so far and how you have a whole like um base and for um you know being honest and truthful and anti-corruption and all that and then he's just like yes and then just sees right through this guy as being like a representative of like the bigger oil companies yeah um next we have uh, pam and cliff he's saying that he needs money for his campaign, um, he wants Pam to do the fashion show, which I think is nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you already you already know where this is going with this story. You're like, well, yeah. she's helping Cliff, and they're back in coal. Ooh. All right. And they also Jr. even makes little like jokey, sarcastic mention of the fact that like Bobby's running campaign funds for their candidate as well. So you've yeah. got Pam in similar roles, and yeah, yeah. So they kind of, well, JR picks on Pam. She walks out. Um, I like how Sue Ellen acts in this episode. She's very, 
I, like she, she's still drinking, but she's just like very. I don't know. She's very laid low. She's just chilling. Like she's just like, she's very like. She's listening to all the Cliff drama. So like when right. the thing comes out, and so I know we'll talk about it when it gets to it. But there's a whole bit later where like you know when JR makes that implication and all that, Sue Ellen basically might as well have had her eyes fall out and her ears on the table to listen. Yeah, she right. leans right in. I mean, I love it, but like, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, Bobby and Pam kind of argue about like how he's back in the other guy and he can't back her. And, and they basically, he's like, uh, we were born on our sides, I guess, because, you know, like they're all both so different. I kind of like, like that little argument too, bar. because it, it pushes across a lot of things that they'll deal with later, especially like as the storylines get more intense. Like, you know, Pam, even though she loves Bobby and she cares for the family, she still thinks that the Ewings are ultimately trying to control everything. It's still that narrative. And then Bobby's like, well, wait, you know, you sit there and argue from this sort of moral high ground, but we know that Cliff will, he believes full heart, well, he thinks we don't know, but like at this point, we don't know yet. <laughs> right, but right, he right. believes that Cliff, when compromised or needed to compromise to get what he wants, he would in a second. And so it's just that idea that, Pam still thinks Pam's still in the like her side is very principled, so it doesn't matter what money they have. So yeah, so we have Sue Ellen. They they meet up with Cliff. Yeah. Um. She eyes them up. They flirt mm -hmm. a little bit. Um. They do. They do. Jock wants to fire their guy. I like this because Jock likes wants to fire the speech guy. Yeah. And yeah. he wants to get the new a new guy to write speeches because they put the people to sleep. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, JR is like, we'll tell you what's necessary. We are paying for your election. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will um, point out too that Sue Ellen, um, at that debate that they show Martin, Cole, and Cliff at, um, Sue Ellen's like the the mediator. Um, she offered to do that when she she sort of looked out and found out that like Cliff was going to be debating that night, and so she goes to be the mediator deliberately to see it. You know. So yeah, that's another like that foreshadowing element of Sue Ellen sort of sitting oh, in the background as well of the whole episode. Yeah, which comes very soon. Yes. Um. So we got. Oh, Jr. is saying how Cliff's like. He's like um. Oh wait, hold on. Jr. says something is wrong with Barnes. He's clean. So he's probably going to try to set him up, is what we're thinking. Oh, more um, I think too. Like he's like, oh, um, Jock tells him nobody's that clean. Put men on it, you know. Um, if right. there's a skeleton there, find it. And then Jr's just like, and if it isn't, I'll put it there. And all Jock I'll does is it. whatever. Yeah, and just sort of exits the scene. And you see, all the I love those little bits because you do. Jock's always portrayed as very honourable, even in the movie when we were watching. It's that a huge theme in that, and why people get pissed off with it. But it's like with Jr. Yeah. It's like Jr.'s those bad things. Like he's the he's that one that'll like, you know, uh, make the make the tough call that Jock doesn't want to. I feel like Jock kind right. of like pushes it off to Jr. to preserve his own sort of thing. So I believe at dinner, Jr. kind of implies that him and the guy that's writing for him is are gay. <laughs> yeah, Peter. So he implies which that Peter. Of, can, yeah, which kind of sets up Pam in a way because she goes it's off mad. a little bit and mentions that a girl died in New York that Cliff was engaged to. Uh, what was her like, name? Give me a second. She has a name, and I can't remember it at the moment. I Penny. Think I wrote it like, Penny. Oh, there you go. I know. I think I wrote it later because I don't think we, uh, I don't know if they mentioned it in that scene. Cliff doesn't mention but, it until the end, I'm pretty sure. Right. So the reporter comes to Cliff and says something about there was an abortion that was involved with the death of the woman. So, of course, this is like a big thing. Pam tries to tell Cliff that she's the one that said something. You know, but he doesn't, he's not having it right now. He's too busy, whatever. Yeah. Try and admit it. She's, you know, she feels terrible because she, she knew she fell for it. Once she said that one thing, she was like, fuck, you can tell on her face. <laughs> like it was like everything. Um, 
the cliff says that he had to keep it a secret to protect her family because it was religious. Yeah. Which is why he didn't want to say anything about it. And um, the bigger thing too for it to discredit his campaign as well is not just the fact that um obviously it's an abortion, which is still a controversial topic. Oh, um for sure. was that, especially was that at the t- yeah, yeah. Um but at the time it was illegal. Uh, when Penny received her abortion, it was illegal. And then so technically, even though it wasn't now, um, the argument was that Cliff gets involved with illegal activities, one in which that led to the death of a loved one. So despite yeah. the fact that um, they do mention that abortion um, is legal currently, at least in the time the episode was produced. Yeah. So Cliff doesn't suspect Pam at all. He's like not even thinking it's her. Um, Sue Ellen drives over to Cliff's headquarters. Um, Sue Ellen basically, she doesn't rat on Pam, but she's like, I hate to be around when you find out. <laughs> like, yeah, who yeah. ratted you out? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have, uh, oh, Pam, oh, this was a good one. When Pam went and yelled at JR and Jock, she threatens that he will pay. That was a good one. I like that scene yeah. a lot. Pam just goes off. Um, Pam goes to tell Cliff. Um, oh, and then, yeah, she tells him. He goes off on her. Like, he's like you, live with vi- you live with vipers, you're going to become one. <laughs> yeah. He does. They get really mad. I will point I out, that- too, I do, I do like that line JR gives when he, fe- when he hears from the PI or whatever. Um, he goes and he calls, I think he calls Jock. And he's just like, yep. Barnes just broke that the one cardinal sin of politics. Don't ever was it don't ever be caught in bed with a live man or a dead woman. And I just I yeah, laugh yeah. at that every time I hear it. But yeah, no, speaking of lines, but yeah, I know it's a bit true, further though. back, I forgot about that until recently. <laughs> till then. True. So I have yeah. that Bobby and Pam. Bobby and Pam make up a little. Um the Ewings on top of the poles. I guess that guy won, Cole won. Yeah, he did. Presumably. Sue Ellen, Sue Ellen kind of hangs with Pam and she's like they have oh she's like sorry the best man lost would have been yeah. nice if JR didn't always get what he wants yeah which um, becomes a bit of a repeater for her over the next few episodes particularly yeah, that reason. for sure um Bobby sways Pam to go to Cliff uh she swears she didn't mention Penny's death that's when I that's when I got Penny yeah. <laughs> yeah. um it says she loves him. She apologizes. Um, oh, and then at the end, Cliff calls a man. He wants to buy a seat on this, the Senate for Congress. Yeah. Or for Senate well, for Congress. Well, but Bobby also takes Pam over to the office to sort of clear things up because he sort of didn't realize that Pam's kind of the one that gave JR the sort of the trail, but, you right. know, thinks that it was deliberate and they do end up making up like bobby they explain it and like um she yeah it's actually a really i like that scene because earlier like cliff does absolutely lose it at her which is sort of fair enough but like he doesn't give her a chance to explain and he, this is that something that drives me nuts with cliff multiple times in this series is he just wants to yeah. up and listen yeah. like yep. yeah I know, but now he's. This is kind of where he takes a little bit of a dark turn because he realizes against the Ewings, he's going to have to do what he's got to do. So he also kind of proves Bobby right. And the next episode is called Survival. Um, we're at the we're at the yeah. store. Bobby calls Pam about a trip they plan. She's busy with work. This is where her work communication issues start. <laughs> yeah. Um JR and Bobby talking about Charlie Cox. Um JR is wearing his safari shirt. Again. Again, yeah. He wears it a lot. <laughs> he does. Oh, I like the the line um JR said to Bobby, if you if you handle the company like how you handle your wife, we're in big trouble. <laughs> yeah, they're just bickering on the plane. There's tension yeah, because Pam, Pam wasn't able to meet him over in New, I think they said New Orleans they were. Um Is that where they were going? I forgot I, where they were going. I think that's where they were coming back from because I know that um 
Uh, oh, they were coming it? back. Yeah, they were coming back. And um, what was it? I'm fairly certain Ellie says it a few times that there was like a big storm over New Orleans. So like the boys were so they because she's lying to Jock. Yeah, which we'll get into. Like, I, um, yeah. Oh yeah, in a little bit. I I thought that this what with this episode was going to be the totally different one when um, these two and Jock were lost together. I, no, that that, happened, I'm I pretty guess, sure later. that's season three. I think that's season okay. three. Interesting trick. I couldn't. So I was surprised when it was this one, and I'm like, oh, I did not remember what was happening. I felt like this one very much focused on the women. I feel like this one very much focused on the women. Yeah. Yeah, we got some good scenes in this one. I thought so. Um, Although, they, you know, they always do that shit where they're trying to protect people, and it's so annoying. It is. (laughs) Telling people things, because it just has a worse effect. Well, like, in this instance, with Jock, I somewhat kind of understand for Soapy logic, because, like, um, when he's at the doctor's, they even mention that he can't be on the horse riding around the ranch doing shit, because he's old, right. but he's old and he's just come off, like, the massive... The heart surgery. Heart. Yeah, yeah, so he's got to basically... But at, yes. but at the same way, Lucy ran away in the other episode, so, and he handled that, so I feel like kind of similar, I mean... Well, I yeah, guess except the boys have gone down in a plane crash. Right, but they're still so just missing. Ran away. No, right. They were still just considered missing. They weren't considered dead yet or anything. So, right, but like, I just think like a plane crash is probably the situation. Like, at least if Lucy runs away, she might come back. <laughs> <laughs> what she did. I mean, certainly, yeah, what she did. And certainly, mm-hmm. you know, like a plane crash doesn't necessarily mean death, but it hits you. It hits you almost immediately. Then running away does. You know. Yeah. Um, so I have note that Pam changes her plan so she can come home to hang with Bobby. Yeah. Um, so Ellen goes to Cliff, fills him in on the baby mama drama. Uh, she wants him to help find Rita. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Well, she explains everything. And, and yeah, he says there's, he says there's nothing he could do. It'll help if she divorces Jr. and treats her to lunch. Um, she's pretty disappointed this, about it and he's just like yeah well like, unless you're gonna leave her leave him you can't adopt a child without his consent yeah this is where bobby and um jr had there was a bad storm they go missing whatever this is where the plane went down i guess or whatever and they make Ellie an attempt to from show Jack. bobby and jr kind of starting to get along again too like you know just in terms of like their dynamic at ewing oil and then it's oh we've got turbulence and woo, freeze frame Right, and I didn't remember, like, that was, like, their only scene until, like, the end. <laughs> yeah, they kept them out of it pretty much the entire time. Yeah, like, even I didn't they find remember the wreckage, that. Even when they find the wreckage, it's just voiceovers on, like, the, um, on the scenery. It doesn't actually show yeah. the voice. I was like, and yes. it's, it's also funny, too, because it's called Survival. So I'm like, who's Survival? I'm like, I wonder if it was meant for the women, like, the title, because yeah. how they're surviving getting through their loss of those yeah, two. Definitely. I don't know. Because yeah. you would think it'd be like them, like Bobby and Jr. Sur- fighting for survival to get home. I think, but I think it's nice too that in that, like, if you talk about so in saying that, so like it starts to focus on the women, and you've got Ellie, who is kind of like the big protective mother, obviously, uh, not just because she's a mother, but goes into protect mode and creates this bubble around Jock, Jock while she handles everything, and she right. she handles everything pretty well in an emergency. Like she's like, okay, Ray, I want you coordinating with these people. Call this person, um, and every bit of information comes through me. Do not talk to Jock. You know, um, then when the reporters start to try and come on, she's like, no, make sure there's guards at the at the entrance. They will try to get in. Um, you know, you have Pam, who's very much like just Devo and waiting to hear news and being very sort of like, you know, norm, like normal. And then you've got Sue Ellen, who <laughs> is out, out of the like, <laughs> yeah, whose whole life is defined by JR's, her marriage to JR and all that so like everything she doesn't have a place if jr's gone because she doesn't have a son yet uh, like a child yet and then you've yeah, got yeah. lucy who i thought was really sweet it was really sweet lucy immediately wants to call gary because that's her that those are his brothers and right. i got really annoyed with sue ellen in that scene because she slams it down she's like oh yeah so what can he take so he can take over and it's like oh my god <laughs> sh- shut up <laughs> i know 
right? That annoyed me for Lucy so much. I'm glad she I got back. <laughs> I go back and forth with Sue Ellen in the early episodes too. Because I'm like, <laughs> I almost feel like you don't know what she's doing. Like she's, you know, like you never know what she's up to or what she, what her motives are. And I guess it's basically, yeah, to have a kid in any way, shape, or form she, that she can. It's because she doesn't um, feel like she has a place there. Really, she's literally just. She kind of is like just this drunken ghost that flitters about the house. No one, you and know, she's like... also looking for attention. I think too, mm. like she's trying to yeah. get attention from people to feel good about herself. You know, yeah, to feel it's valued. Sad. It's really like sad. Yeah. It is. That's, that's. I think that episode is really well done for all those di- the, all is. the di- the dynamics. Yeah. So you covered a lot because I did the press call of the Ewings. That's when um, they were suspecting about like people coming on the land and all that. Um, yeah. The shotgun scene. Oh, the Pam and Sue Ellen scene was probably my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> With, good. Um, that was good. So it was. Pam, Pam gets on Sue Ellen about drinking. Um, yeah. She's like, I'm Mrs. J.R. Ewing, and she keeps going, J.R. Ewing. <laughs> like, yeah. She's just, she's very, like, in a depressed mood almost. She's like, goodbye, everything. She could give two shits that J.R. is missing, really, I think. Yeah, it's um, just, that, just like, that I'm losing dying. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Pam slaps her, which it was a good slap, too. Well, and then, she basically calls her a whore that, like, had men pay, men pay for it. And she's like, I have always worked, you bitch. Whack. You know? Like, yeah, yeah. I forgot it how many seasons. Uh, yeah. And Sue Ellen, I, I like when Sue Ellen took Pam's hand, because she's, like, she just... She's a mess. I feel like she's... She's a mess, and I feel like Pam <laughs> knows it. Like, Pam sees it all the time, and that's why I feel like Pam has, like, a certain... Um, I guess not feeling sorry for, but understanding of who Sue Ellen is and like what she's yeah. trying to do for herself. Like I feel like well, she gets it. I well, always love their relationship. Hand. It's one of my favorites. Same. Um, she takes her hand. I always saw the slap is like it was Pam dealing with another drunk, like another drunk mouthing off and saying the too. worst things. Like Pam lost her temper, and I think actually just the way Victoria kind of does the blow up and then it just stops. Like it seems a little bit odd, almost not bad, but like like maybe over like over exaggerated. And I'm like, no, 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 that's yeah. someone who's just lost it for a second because they've been patient with this shit all fucking night. You yeah. know, and like, her husband's missing, and she loves him. Yeah. So there's you know there's a, a lot. Yeah, and, and she's yeah, sick of that she's poor. <laughs> like I can understand that too. <laughs> so now we have the scene with Miss Ellie with the shotgun at the door. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. She has Ray get her a shotgun because there's a reporter that gets up somehow because I guess Ray's not doing his job good. Well, <laughs> South <laughs> Candle in it. Yeah, it is. It is that big. So they could get it but anywhere. Yeah, he comes right up to the door and confronts her directly and she's just like stone-faced. Ray, yeah. give me my shotgun. <laughs> um, Jock overhears it. He's upset. He's like, why didn't you tell me? I started tearing up at that part. I'm like, this is poor yeah. guy. Yeah. And he's more upset. I feel like that this made him more upset. Like I feel like she should have just fucking told him. This is what you know. Yeah, I sort of get it. I hate it. I sort of get it. Uh but you know, Ellie too, um, she's uh, you know, she's all the strength and everything, but and they even mention it later, she talks about it a bit. She goes over the boys. Like she she almost lost Jock to her his heart. She's lost Gary to the family, essentially. And now she could lose to her only other two sons, like her only other two children. Yeah, she so mentioned she's hold it together, but she's also a bit of a mess. She's just less yeah, of a drunken. She, she mentions that like Jock had had Jr. and that she always fussed over Gary because Gary reminded her of her dad. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and then Bobby came along and that whatever. <laughs> Bobby just kind of got every, like, kind of was the third child and sort of got all all of it, you know? Like, he got everything that JR kind of had to work for and that Gary wasn't interested in. And here's another annoying scene, too. With Jack and Lucy, I have that uh, outside for breakfast again. <laughs> oh, Lucy, yes, this goddamn scene, yes. Every episode, yeah, Lucy mentions Gary and he brushes it off. He's like, nope. Like, what just the fuck? fuck? Like, he tries to brush it off and then he shuts her the whole way down. Like, I don't want to hear any more about it, Lucy. And she's just like, 
they're his brothers i know like, it makes, it makes I also, family it's fucked up i know <laughs> not not to say that gary was going to be exactly easy to track down because even what we do here on that phone call before sue ellen slams it down he's pissed off from his casino job or well, the last casino right. job he had. right so Ray finds JR and Bobby, brings them home. Um, yep. The women run to their men. I feel like the JR and Sue Ellen stuff. So Sue Ellen ran to him, and then JR like took her off and went and hugged his mom. <laughs> I'm like, this is so. Well, it's weird. weirdly edited. Like I feel like like she would have leaned in to kiss him and hug, and he would have. I don't see why he wouldn't have kissed her back or anything because he does give her a very "I'm home, Sue Ellen" look. Even though they're not sort of close, there are a few times there in these sort of episodes. I had forgotten where Swellen is relieved to see him and JR is relieved to be home and to see everyone and to see her, you know, right. like I, I just, it's, you know, in a lot of other shows, I feel like the bad marriage would be played very one note, but this bad marriage is always, it is the best written bad marriage in my opinion. <laughs> it is. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Um, and then, then I have the last note I have is Miss Ellie says, now we can be a real family. She's so oblivious. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this is why I say Miss Ellie is a terrible mother. <laughs> like, she just doesn't pay attention. Like, has she? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have a baby. Right, Keep so... it in <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> the next episode, or the last episode we're talking about tonight is Act of Love. Uh, <laughs> which I also I actually really like this episode. This is um it's a really good I, one. Yeah. So again, I have too. again I have they're all outside. <laughs> Bobby yes. runs off. Um Doc gets on Pam about working. Lucy wants her own car, which would be yes. Ewing seven, right? I guess. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to keep up with these cars. Um Pam is out with some girls. She sees Cliff. Sue Ellen runs into Pam, then leaves. So I guess Cliff and Sue Ellen were trying to meet up, but yes. Pam so got in the Pam, way. Yeah, so Pam's doing a little business meeting, you know, like um for the store. And she runs into Cliff at a Ritzia restaurant and even makes a joke. I like that joke. She's like, well, with me, it's always like a soda and a taco, you know? And he's like, well, I don't have to impress you. And you're like, yeah, you're yeah, like yeah. Oh, yeah. and he's like, oh, I've been stood up. And as she turns around, Swell and um, looking very sweet and wholesome walks in and is like, oh no, dear, I've just, I've just finished eating. So I'd have to like, you know, catch you next time. And it's obviously, <laughs> it's obviously a setup. And Sue Ellen's obviously arrived late, probably right. because she had to drive Lucy's whinge and ass around. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, so we're at dinner at the Ewings. We find out JR is going to Washington. Yeah. Trying to make Bobby do a bunch of stuff. Jack says he will handle it. Um, because Bobby's still doing the construction deal and working with that stuff. Well, he's sort of doing a bit of both. Like, there's, I think this one was also, uh, what was it? That fella, I can't remember that curly haired old man that Bobby was working with, um, mentioned something about a client interested in the land. And I can't remember what it was about exactly, but it's like, um, oh, so we'll have like a get together. And Bobby says, no, we'll have like an old barbecue sort of party out at the house. And uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we yeah, never said. Well, I oh, yeah. at least not more we'll, episode. We'll, yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Ellen wants to take JR to the airport to make sure he gets on the plane. <laughs> she has plans of her own. She does. Um, of course, there's a blonde woman on a plane. I don't know where she came from that JR is involved with. Yes. Um,. Basically, they're trying to. They're basically going into the, each like their own setup for the weekend or like for the night. So like, you know, um, Jr's got like his business, yeah, but he's got that blonde woman, and Sue Ellen has a dick date with Cliff. Yeah. So we have that. Um, the guy calls about the Faraday's coming, excited to meet Pam. That's the party that they're talking yeah, about exactly. having. Um, Sue Ellen comes in with her lingerie on to be with Cliff. So I guess this is where they they hook up the first time and they make sweet love. <laughs> no, actually, Cliff mentions that, uh, no, uh, Sue Ellen mentions that her and Cliff have been having an affair for six weeks. So, yeah, but they do make sweet love this time too. They do, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah yes, they've yes. been getting together. 
Um, and then, so I have Bobby. See, again, they're in the pool. Bobby and Pam are swimming. Um, Sue Ellen's making plans with Cliff. Sue Ellen and Pam have lunch. Oh, this was funny. <laughs> like, I like Sue Ellen's like, you brought me here to have a, like, to have a party? Like, what the fuck? Like this is like well, yeah, she thought it was yeah, she thought Pam had clicked onto something after catching them at the other restaurant. So she's she's ready to go. And when she and like when she finds out it's just over a party, she's kind of pissed off. <laughs> she's like, she's oh, very so pissed I'm not off. Get the third degree. Why am I here? <laughs> right, and she, she leaves. She's like, well, she's, she's like, yeah, I'll there. give it. I'll give you the number to the caterer, and I'm out. <laughs> so she rolled yeah. out. Um. It was kind of funny though, because Pam, Pam too, she plays it so well. She's just like, it's weird, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so Sue Ellen meet, leaves to meet Cliff. He questions her about Jr. She's like, no, she won't say anything. Whatever. Um, and um, a part, and wonders like, whether or not that's why he's seeing her. Right, and he's yeah. like, he he says, "You're with me to piss off Jr." So I mean, they both feel like they're using each other, but they're kind of not. I feel like they're kind of crushing on each other. They are, but um, Cliff plays it off. Like Cliff, he sort of plays it off a little bit. Like, um, you know, he he does sort of not say he he doesn't deny it, but he does kind of add more into the fact that she's interesting to him. So like, it's just. Yeah. It's just this thing, like, I actually, I know Sue Ellen is, like, a part of it, obviously, but I just feel like she's in such more of a, like, much more of a vulnerable position than he is. And it's, it's right. sweet, but it's sad, because, like, he is using her. Yeah. But. Like, yeah. yeah. We'll see. We, we, we see it progress. Um, so Liz I mean, tells Pam she's context. going to Paris. Liz tells Pam she's going to Paris for work. Of course, it's the same time as this party is supposed to happen for Bobby. She yeah. doesn't tell him because this is the communication that she ends up being poor at. Yes. Um, Sue Ellen goes to the doctor for a checkup, and she's preggers. Um, Six. Mm -hmm. Bobby goes to Liz at the store. She mentions Paris. He's surprised because, of course, Pam didn't tell him, so he has to find out. Another way. Yep. Fuck. Um, and he wanted to buy a dress to surprise her. Bobby goes home. So Ellen gets a call. She's pregnant. Oh, that's when we find out. I, so she just went to the doctor. Whatever. I put pregnant, like, question mark. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so JR is on the phone. She tells him she's pregnant. Um, he says, take care, Sue Ellen. Um, I believe him. She said, I believe him. She that. says, she says, I love you, and he can't... Well, of course, it's his baby. He doesn't care, because he, he didn't say he loves her back. <laughs> so I just don't think he's that bitter with Sue Ellen at the moment, where he gets later, where he probably would see her get hit by a car. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. I just don't think he's I don't know. I still I still feel like it's only because she's pregnant, in yeah. my opinion. Um, well, I, this is the thing. I've actually wanted to bring this up, but I've been waiting for episodes, so this is the start of it. Um, mm -hmm. I always like as far as like the best bad couple, like best written bad couple. I have always maintained throughout the series until it sort of starts to get a bit later on and it's too far. Um, like everything's too far gone. I believe that there were quite a few moments in the early seasons where Sue Ellen and Jr. actually could have made it work. There could have been these moments. There were these little moments where things could have potentially been different. You know. And I think I this was think one of so. them. Pardon? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> no, that's what I, mean. I really don't. I mean. I've always, I've wanted to have these, I've been waiting to bring this up because it's something that I've always argued, I've always like debated with and stuff. And like find that it's I, like the good with the, like I love, that's what I love about the characters is I can, I, I love that I can actually make this argument for them. <laughs> I, and not to I say don't that they're still going to be toxic, but yeah. <laughs> I don't see it at all. Um, I do, later but like later in the series but not in these early seasons i feel like he just wants sue ellen to have this baby and basically that's until it. he thinks until he thinks until he starts adding up the dates he's actually well, wait, 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 wait 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 yeah. get to that we're not there yet um so are we, are we? i'm pretty sure that's towards the end of the episode when jr finds out about <laughs> yeah, the you're right, you're right. yeah you're right yeah 
So that becomes her yeah, yeah. So that the Pam and Bobby stuff is so sweet this whole episode though. It starts with them sort of being like, Oh, you know, you couldn't cut you know, like, like the last episode in Survival, you know, she missed a trip to go see him and they're still having these dramas and now the you know, she right. it, it, I actually thought it was really sweet the way Bobby was with her. He's just like brings her the dress and he's just like, you know, it'll look great and she's like, Oh, but you know, and then Pam does her. They both did the same thing without telling each other and then dropped yeah. the sweet bombs on each other at the end. I thought it was so nice. Yeah, it was. So, yeah, Cliff, I like that Cliff said Sue Ellen is terrific. And <laughs> she tells Cliff that she's pregnant. Cliff thinks it may be his. Because, you know, Sue Ellen and JR are only banged once since, uh, I don't think they've banged at all since we knew that. At least, since, the one yeah, time. at least since the show has started, yeah. Um, and then he says to her, like, no matter what, you ain't leaving JR. So he already, like, knows how their relationship's going to go. Like, JR, comes home, JR comes home, everybody's happy. Uh, Bobby gives Pam a dress, and he tells, says it's for Paris. Um, she tells him he's wonderful. She says she isn't going, though. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And these are okay. cute moments, but it also is the beginning of the end of communication issues because there's still yes. this shit that gets on my nerves that we're going to talk about in the next five episodes, I'm sure. Can I just say quickly um, with the scene with Cliff and um, Sue Ellen, I have that, that, there's that moment there where he's like, Cliff's being very realistic, like he's having a normal conversation and Sue Ellen changes for a minute there. Like, it was just so sad. Like, it made, and I've always thought that made, it's one of the early points, even when I was watching the series for the first time, I was like, this, she's so sad. Like, he, okay. um, you know, oh, come on, Sue Ellen. He's like, I, I don't have the money. You aren't going to, you weren't going to leave me for him. And she's like, I might have. You know, and it's like this moment there where she might have, like, she might have considered it. And, but she it even knows that she won't. <laughs> she even exactly. knows that she won't. And it's so, it, that to me is just really sad. <laughs> but this, this ends great. So yeah. JR, come, JR pops the champagne um, to Sue Ellen and the baby. Uh, six weeks, he says. Six weeks, he was in Austin. <laughs> six weeks ago, he was yeah. in Austin. And she says, I've been just as faithful as you are. <laughs> yeah, I've been just as faithful, um, faithful to our marriage vows as you. <laughs> he ends up he ends up slapping her, and she says, "Never again." I like when she stands up like that. Yeah, I'll do what and, I want. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and now that, that just, say, like, just made me laugh. I was just like, "Lol!" Like, <laughs> and so so yeah, he doesn't know about Cliff yet, but he knows Sorry. that she's cheating. So yeah, no. he's not sure if this baby's his. And she's like, well, it doesn't matter. She's like, whose baby is Chances are it's yours. <laughs> Chances are it's yours. I love it. So, yeah, that's all. Yeah. In these episodes. It is. Yeah. And this that just that last scene quickly, that is the scene there where, like, he's excited and he's kind of talking about, like, you know, oh, tell me what happened. Like, why did you go to the doctors? And all that. And he's like, six weeks. And that's when he starts to roll around. Otherwise, like, he's not exactly super loving, but there's another time as well um, around season four, the end of season four, I think it could have possibly, they could have reconciled that something else, you know? <laughs> and yeah, it's, yeah. But yeah, no, but it's uh... not that it was going to work. It was always going to go that way. But you can see where these little like olive branches almost sort of start to come out and then the other because of what's happening just slaps that but shit I love, away. I love how Sue Ellen plays this though. Like she it's the, she's like a master in this scene. Like she's and just like, like swirling that glass still as she always does. <laughs> and it's almost like like she wants to be pregnant with she don't care who's and that's the way to get to JR. Yeah, and then when yeah. JR, if JR finds out it's Cliff, then she knows it'll put him over the edge. So I feel like this is like a double-edged sword for her. Like, she's like, I can get she's you. Not considered. She's not really yeah. considered. She's just hurt and angry. And she's like, well, if it hurts him, it's fine. Not what he'll exactly. do over it. Yeah. Right. But anyway, anything else to say about these five episodes? Um, no, I thought we covered it all pretty well. I mean, the, like the filler ones were the filler ones, and then the fun ones were the fun ones. <laughs> yeah, I liked all of these episodes. They were fun in their own way. And I, I always yeah, liked their own ones, too. Um, but yeah, so 
we'll wrap this up. Find us on all the socials at Queers and Soaps. Um, we're bringing a lot more stuff to you in the coming weeks. We have a lot more soaps coming, um, some rare ones and all that. So me and Tommy are working on stuff. Me and Karen are working on stuff. Lots coming. <laughs> me and Bevan are working on stuff. <laughs> more Dallas. A good one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we have more Dallas next week. And uh, yeah. have a good one, everyone. Bye. Bye.